The financial markets are something that everybody watches. And people don't feel good when the market is down. People feel like they are worth less. And at a time when the market is down seriously, they feel very, very bad. And that's what happened in 1987. The market took a, a big dive. There was a lot of distress selling. And the media is always happy to tell the worst story about what, ha what just happened. And I thought, you know, this is a shame. It's always a shame if you're in business and you rely on, on good days. But in a broader context, I thought, you know, this is definitely not a nice thing for the country. And because uh, the, I, the concept of a museum had been suggested to me before by several people, as I think I mentioned earlier, I thought, well, maybe this is the right time. There's an important event, the creation of a museum here can be related to that important event. And I said, okay. And I took a, a foundation which we had in the family and changed the name. <coughs> And then I sent an email to a number of people announcing this, and uh, we, there we were. That was 1987, in the fall of the year. And at, the, at about that time, uh, we, I made uh, a sort of a plan to have an exhibit. And I wanted to bring the material to the attention of the public because I knew from my own experience that the material would suggest this marvelous history and people would respond to that, I thought. So a, uh, an exhibit was planned and we went to the custom house, and the custom house said, okay, you can have this room, beautiful room. And I then found a woman in uh, Washington who had done work on Alexander Hamilton. And I said, you know, do you, do you have anything that would be useful? And she said... You know, I have an exhibit that I created for the U.S. Treasury, but they have never responded to me. I said, okay, I'll take it. So I knew that the exhibit would be a scholarly thing that I didn't have to worry about. And she had already had a friend of hers a look at the at the custom house and she knew how she would set the exhibit up so i just had to say okay so i did that and the exhibit came into being and then it was announced and people began to come to the exhibit and they loved it there were about 75 objects in the exhibit. Most of them were from my collection. Some were from other firms that I had asked to contribute. And the timeline was from the colonial days up to 1918. And people were surprised to see that stuff. And the exhibit was reviewed in a very complimentary way. And then people understood, they began to understand my excitement about expressing 
a love of the history through these objects that were actually the evidence of the history. And the attitude about the museum began to change and it began to be much more positive and constructive. And I leaned on that as much as I could. And those were difficult days in the beginning because there were very few people who were willing to be outspoken about this new concept about a museum of finance. People say, you know, how can you have a museum like that? And we, we persevered. And there were others at that time that were uh, involved with me. And of course, Diana was involved. And we then, we, I realized that we were not getting much commentary from anybody. And I realized that we needed to have a physical place so that people could say, yes, you can go there and see it. So I took a piece of the office space that the trading firm was in that was not being used. It was a private street entrance at number 24 Broadway. You entered from the street and you came into a little uh, reception area. And that was probably only uh, four or 500 square feet. That was the first museum location. I had some exhibit cases made, put them up, filled them up with objects, and we then started a series of exhibits. And people came along and I invited, we would have an opening of the exhibit, and I invited people from the stock exchange, and I invited other community people, and they were surprised. They never had seen these things before, and they liked them, and they began to comprehend the whole message. Well, that was a godsend, and that put the museum in a different light. There were some complimentary reviews in publications, and we just uh, continued to lean on that uh, phenomenon and encourage it. And, you know, things went forward. I think a lot of people were interested to see something they had never seen before, but that they had heard a lot about because of their interest in the stock market on a daily basis. So now they had a chance to see stock certificates of another time and place. And I think that's part of it. At the same time, the collector hobby uh, was in full swing by that time. And they were able to follow their first interest by referring to these collector things that were happening. And some of those people said, yes, this is terrific. I want one of those. And they, the different people who observed this, had different specialized interests of their own. And they realized that they could get a piece of evidence that expressed the interest that they had in some other subject that we knew nothing about. And so the, the demand for a specific certificate of that particular time and place arose among the public, and that contributed to the development of the collector market. And the museum continued to create displays of objects so that people had a reference point they could go and see things, and then they could go and, if they wanted to, they could try and get one for themselves. I remember that, of course, as a collector, 
I wanted a piece of each of the original 13 states. That took years to, to get in my collection. Then, when I had done that, we made an exhibit at the museum of those pieces. And uh, the people from the New York State Museum came to see that. They thought it was wonderful. We were blessed with good comments. And that gave us the confidence to continue. And we simply promoted and continued and advertised and spoke to people. And that's what we did. And we never stopped. Mm -hmm.